Hey, what's up everyone? It's Warren, and it's Thursday, so it's time for another episode of Theory Thursdays. Congratulations to last week's winner, Theory number 5, Leonardo with his theory on how Avengers Endgame is going to play out. Congrats, Leonardo, you are now in the pool of champions, and tomorrow I'll do a video where you can all vote for which theory was your favorite for February. As for this week, we have some really great theories. Different than we've heard in the past, so I'm really excited to talk about them. If you're new to Theory Thursdays, it's my new segment where you all submit your theories to me, I choose five every week, and you all vote on which one is your favorite. Each week, we will have one winner, and at the end of the month, you will vote on which winner's theory you thought was your favorite. The overall winner wins the month and the monthly prize, which is currently two IMAX tickets, so you can go see Avengers Endgame in IMAX. If you'd like to submit a theory for your chance to end up in an episode, you can find the instructions down in the description below. Just a heads up, I got a lot of theories this week for Captain Marvel. I did not choose any, so there would be no spoilers for anybody who has not seen the movie yet. Alright, so let's get started with some theories. Theory number one this week comes from Kevin Pugh. And Kevin says, remember the scene at the end of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Star-Lord needed the help of all the other Guardians to wield the Power Stone without dying. We keep seeing theories of other Avengers wielding the Gauntlet to undo the snap. What if Avengers Endgame has a similar ending to the Guardians one, but instead we see each original Avenger using a stone to defeat Thanos, but the power sends each of the Avengers to a different fate. Captain America using the Time Stone gets sent back to the past and Bucky becomes the new Captain America. Hawkeye using the Reality Stone sends him to an alternate reality to be reunited with his family. Iron Man using the Mind Stone, Tony retires but unlocks the mutant gene and goes off to investigate. Hulk wielding the Space Stone gets transported and disappears, he may return in later movies. Thor wields the Power Stone and is unaffected physically but feels the weight of being ruler of Asgard and leaves. And Kevin's theory states that Black Widow will die in the movie during rising action. This theory is certainly thinking outside of the box, which is one thing I really like about it. Kevin is right when he says that the Avengers cannot wield the power of the Infinity Stones. They're not strong enough, and when I think of the Guardians of the Galaxy scene, I think of what Steve Rogers has said in the past, about the Avengers doing everything together. And having the stones affect each Avenger in a personal way would be a really cool twist. So I can definitely see this theory playing out on the big screen. So that does it for theory number one, on to theory number two. Theory number two comes from JGF, and JGF has a theory about the bracelets all of the Avengers are wearing in the leaked set photos. JGF's theory is that these bracelets are actually used to hold any of the various Infinity Stones when or if the Avengers get them. If the Avengers are traveling through the Quantum Realm collecting the Infinity Stones, they will need something to hold on to them, as the only people with the power to do so are Captain Marvel and Thor. We know that mortals can hold on to an Infinity Stone, except they just need something strong enough to contain its power. Now Rocket, Bruce, Tony, Scott, and Nebula would be able to design these bracelets because they have all been in contact with the Infinity Stones, whether in the past or they have some sort of extensive knowledge. Speaking about the cube, the orb, and the scepter. So when they all put their minds together, they will be able to create these bracelets to hold the Infinity Stones. The reason JGF thinks they are not used for traveling inside of the Quantum Realm is because Hank Pym didn't use any sort of bracelet like that when he went in there. And also the Avengers already have a suit to travel, so creating two different things just to go into the Quantum Realm is a bit much. So, JGF thinks that Tony, Bruce, Scott, Rocket, and Nebula will build these bracelets we've all seen in the leaked photos in order for them to hold onto the collected Infinity Stones. This certainly makes a lot of sense, especially if the Avengers are going back in time to collect the Infinity Stones. It's true, they can't hold on to them themselves. They'll need some sort of container. And the Avengers do have some knowledge about the Infinity Stones, and a lot of the Avengers are really, really smart. So they could definitely design a device capable of holding an Infinity Stone. And like JGF said, they already have the suits. Ant-Man already has the technology to travel inside of the Quantum Realm. I would not be surprised if this theory ends up being true for Avengers Endgame. So that does it for theory number two, on to theory number three. Theory three comes from Brandon Burney with a theory on what happened to Shuri after Avengers Infinity War. Brandon says, as we know, Nakia was not in Infinity War with Shuri, Okoye, and the Wakandan army and Captain America's Avengers team due to her being on a secret mission. Of course we know Okoye survived the snap, and we have yet to learn about Shuri until Avengers Endgame comes out. It says that she died in the trailer, but this could be misdirection from the Russo brothers. 
If Shuri did survive, maybe both her and Okoye could be searching for Nakia, find her, and inform her on what has happened to T'Challa and ask her to come back to Wakanda so they can help the Avengers defeat Thanos. I find this interesting because I kind of don't believe that Shuri is dead. I think this was misdirection from the Russo brothers in the Avengers Endgame trailer. And it would make sense for Shuri to go off and search for Nakia to find out whether or not she survived the snap. We do know Nakia went on a secret mission, and maybe that mission could be really important for Avengers Endgame. It's definitely something to think about because I do not think that Shuri is dead. So that's it for theory number three, on to number four. Number four comes from Jeff Exodus, and Jeff believes that Loki is still alive. Jeff says, I believe Loki used his illusions and what Thanos actually broke was the neck of one of the already dead Asgardians lying around the ship. Loki has never made a direct and obvious straight on attack on anybody. It seems idiotic that he would falter from this self-preservation against the Mad Titan wearing the space and the power stone. Jeff believes that the line spoken by Thanos, no resurrections this time, was needed in order for the surprise and suspense of Loki's outcome to be there after all the previous so-called deaths. So the question is, how did Loki and Valkyrie, who was also missing, get away? Jeff says that if you pay attention to the end of Thor Ragnarok, there is a quick scene that shows the outer hull of the Asgardian ship they used to escape Ragnarok. And like a homage to Empire Strikes Back, where the Millennium Falcon attaches to the Star Destroyer, the Grandmaster's personal ship is attached to the outer hull. Just like Valkyrie, it is missing in Infinity War, nor is there anything in the wreckage resembling it. There's a good chance that that's how they escaped while Thanos was concentrating on killing a fake Loki. This is a very interesting theory, mainly because I am one of the people who believes that Loki isn't actually dead. And Jeff makes an excellent point when he says that Loki has never attacked anybody like that before. And if you do think about it, it is idiotic on Loki's part. He knows who Thanos is, he knows how strong he is, he knows what the Infinity Stones are, and he knows that Thanos has two of them. Why would he attack Thanos? I always thought that it was an illusion, but I never thought that it could be one of the already dead as Guardians that Loki switched. It makes a lot of sense and could quite possibly be what actually happened. So that's theory number four, on to the final theory number five. Theory number five comes from Nick Garula, and his theory is that Thanos never left Earth. Nick thinks that Thanos is still in Wakanda. Nick says, after re-watching Avengers Infinity War, I noticed something at the end of the film. When Thanos walks out of his hut, to the right you can see what looks like flamingos. Then in the trailer, you see him brush against what looks like the Kiwanu fruit. Flamingos and Kiwanu fruit are both native to Africa. Also, the kicker to this is that he looks at the sunset and sighs. Wakanda is known for its beautiful sunsets. This is a pretty well thought out theory and good catch. One of the screenwriters has said that Thanos is on Titan 2, but again, there is so much misdirection when it comes to what they want us to see and know about this movie. And we've seen leaks where Thanos is on Earth at the Avengers headquarters fighting the Avengers. And in the in-game Super Bowl TV spot, we see Thor in a place that kind of looks like Wakanda. Perhaps Thanos is in Wakanda and Thor went searching for him. Again, I would not be surprised if we saw this happen in Avengers Endgame. So that does it for all this week's theories, let's do a quick recap. Theory number one was that the Avengers will each hold an Infinity Stone to defeat Thanos and each stone will give each Avenger a different fate, such as Captain America being flung back in time. Theory number two was about the bracelets that we've seen in the leaked photos being used to hold Infinity Stones when the Avengers travel through the Quantum Realm. Theory number three is that Shuri is actually alive and she went to search for Nakia to help the Avengers. Theory number four is that Loki is still alive and him and Valkyrie escaped on the Grandmaster ship. And theory number five is that Thanos is actually in Wakanda and not off planet. So those are this week's theories. Be sure to vote on which one you thought was your favorite. And again, if you would like to submit your own theory for a chance to end up on Theory Thursdays, you can find the email to send them to and the directions in the description down below. Be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest theories and so you can stay up to date on everything relating to Marvel and Avengers Endgame. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.